I want to do is I want to push on this a little further because essentially what we did to get to these answers was we used the rectangular form of a complex number. I mean, that's, it's written in rectangular form, right? X plus I, Y. These are not the only tools that we have access to, right? So I want us to make a little subheading. And we're going to use our other two forms of complex numbers. We already know what the answers are going to be, but I think you're going to yield, it's going to yield some insight. We've seen this before, right? The more different perspectives, more different perspectives, the more perspectives you look at something from, the more insight you gain. So we're going to use polar very, very briefly and exponential form to find the same roots, but try and gain some new insight. OK, we're going to begin at the same spot. Omega cubed equals 1. Okay. Now, as promised, I'm going to go first to polar form. That's where I'm going to go first. This is a complex number that I can write in polar form. It's written in rectangular form right now. There's the real part. There's no imaginary part. How would I rewrite one unity in polar form? Not a trick question. OK, it's going to start with the cos, right? Because we've got the cos, we've got the I sign part. You've already implied, um, because of you, where you know this is, you've already implied a modulus here, haven't you? Right? Polar forms needs a modulus and an argument. What's the modulus you're implying? One. So now I just need an argument. What is the argument of one? Yeah, it's an angle of zero, because I'm measuring from the positive real axis and I'm already there. So it's an angle of zero. So cos of zero plus I sine of zero. So far, so good. OK, now this is the way we would say one with a principal argument. This is the smallest angle you can use to define where this is. But we know the principal argument is not the only argument. There are many others, infinitely many. And so I just want to remind you that cos and sine are periodic functions. They repeat every how often? Two pi, Two pi radians, right? So cos 0 plus i sine 0, isn't that the same as, I'll fit it here, cos 2 pi plus i sine 2 pi? Do you agree with that? And I could, I could keep going as long as I want, right? I could go to the next one, um, go another 2 pi radians around, it'd be cos 4 pi plus i sine of 4 pi, and so on. Now, I'm pausing there not just because I've run out of space on my whiteboard, but in fact, the particular number of solutions I have on the board is important to me. If your wheels are turning, you can have a think about why. We'll return to this fact. Remind me if I don't remember. But now what I'm going to do, that's all I'm going to do in polar form. I just wanted to remind ourselves that in polar form, we've got this periodicity that we can express the same number in different ways. Now I'm going to rewrite this in exponential form because it's easier and lazier, right? Mm -hmm. uh, exponential form, just to remind you, looks like this. R e to the i theta. Same pieces, right? Modulus argument. What did we say the modulus was? One. one. So this first one here is just e. Like there's, no, there's no extra number out the front. I don't need to write one. e to the i zero. zero. There's the first one. Okay. I can rewrite this one as well. It's going to be e to the i 2 pi, new angle. And then the last one I have on my row is e to the i 4 pi. OK, dot, dot, dot. Now, why might it be useful for me to do this? Well, I'm trying to deal with this. Sorry, it's a very messy three. I'm trying to deal with this power, right? Exponential form is presented in such a way as to make dealing with powers very easy, right? I don't want w cubed, I just want, sorry, w, even I did it. I don't want omega cubed, I want just omega. So what should be the operation that we apply to both sides, I think in terms of powers here, that will give me not omega cubed, but just omega? What power should I raise to? Should be a third, right? Because if I raise this, let's write it, if I raise omega cubed, to the power of a third by index laws, three times a third just gives me one. This will just be omega, right? Well, you can't just do it to the left-hand side. You've got to do it to the right-hand side. So let's, let's do all of them, right? Um, I'm going to have i times 0. That'll be divided by 3, multiplication by a third. Then the next one along. Sorry, that's messy. On 3. And then this is the last one that I had in my list, also divided by 3. Okay. That's a very subtle difference, right? But I want to clarify what's going on in here, yeah? This i to the 0 on 3 is really still i, sorry, e to the i 0, because 0 divided by 3 is still 0, right? 
This I'm going to write as e to the i, and I'm just going to isolate that angle in there because that's the way we write it in exponential form. Not the whole thing divided by some number, but I just want that angle divided by that. So that's i times 2 pi on 3. Are you okay with that? Last one along. 4 pi on 3, dot, dot, dot. Okay. Now, hopefully this matches up to what we saw before, right? We already, you already told me this is 2 pi on 3. This 4 pi on 3, though, a bit pesky, right? It's the long way around, clearly. It's going anti-clockwise, but there was a shorter way to get there, right? What's the shorter path? Yeah, just go, go clockwise instead of anti-clockwise. So what I would do is I would say, this guy is just 1. I already knew what that was. This guy's already written in the correct form, principal argument and everything. And then lastly here, I'm going to write this as e to the i, not positive 4 pi on 3, that's anti-clockwise. I'm going to write it as negative 2 pi on 3, because that's coming around the other way. Can you see that? Is that all right? Now hopefully it'll become clear why I didn't bother going any further than 4 pi. What would have the next one been, by the way? be 6 pi, right? So you've got e to the i 6 pi here. But then when you divide by 3, you'd get along the end here, you'd have e to the i uh, 6 pi on 3, which is 2 pi. I've already got that solution. It's been covered. Okay? I knew that because this is a polynomial up here of degree 3. So I should expect exactly 1, 2, three solutions. This is really important, this idea. It's so important it gets <laughs> like other important things. A name, you should write this down. This is called the fundamental theorem. You know they're not messing around when they call something a fundamental theorem, right? The fundamental theorem of algebra. Uh, more formally stated, it's that an nth degree polynomial will have exactly n solutions. Um, if you count with multiplicity, because sometimes two solutions can sit on the same spot, but we still count them as two solutions. Okay. So, we can tie this up in a neat bow, right? Those things that you said before about this shape, I can get from here. Idea number one, I think I'm doing this in different order to what you did, but I'm getting it out of here. I think Susie was the one who mentioned uh, these moduli, right? They're all one. It's not immediately apparent in rectangular form, but it is apparent in exponential form. Why is that? Yeah, where's the modulus? It's this coefficient out the front, which in all three cases is 1, right? So that's our first thing. We should say this is um, our properties of all roots of unity. Number one, uh, a nice neat way that we can say this is that they're all on the unit circle because that is the set of points that all have modulus 1 from the origin, right? which is another reason why it's called Roots of Unity. That's the first thing. Um, the second thing is, not just do we know something about the moduli, we know something about the arguments, right? Um, I can't remember who mentioned it, but we've got these evenly spaced arguments, right? 2 pi on 3, 2 pi on 3, 2 pi on 3. So point two, we would say they're equally spaced on the circumference. Uh, from the moduli is where I get point one. From the arguments is where I get point two. One last thing, uh, it was actually the first thing I think that we said, GRU, you mentioned. Uh, we get this equilateral, not equilateral, that's not the word I'm looking for, regular. We get this regular polygon. A regular polygon if you treat the different roots of unity as the vertices of a shape. Um, this is cube roots of unity, so you got three, so you get an equilateral triangle. What shape would you get if we did the fourth roots of unity? You'd get a regular thing with four sides, a square, and then a regular pentagon, and a regular hexagon, and so on. Now what's really delightful is property one and property two exactly give you property three, not just because it looks like it. Watch. Angle, 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 all the same, right? Sides, also the same. So therefore, my reasoning is these outside lengths must be all, we have a special name for this, congruent, right? Because you've got side, angle, side, all three triangles identical. Does that make sense? So you can see it doesn't just look like it, it comes directly out of the properties. 